An overwhelming amount of research has shown that there is a direct link between medical mistrust and race, ethnicity, and discrimination. First, let's discuss the basics. Medical mistrust is defined as suspicion or lack of trust in medical organizations, where medical mistrust has been shown to be linked to patients avoiding treatment and not being given the same level of treatment, thus leading to potential negative health outcomes. In contrast, having a higher level of trust in physicians is linked to better health outcomes where a greater quality of life was observed. Now let's discuss these findings in further detail. A paper published by Alpers in 2016 on State Journals demonstrated their findings in relation to trust levels correlating with treatment outcomes. The study was a qualitative review interviewing a cohort of immigrants from African and Asian countries. It was found that the level of trust that patients hold within their physician has a direct correlation with the outcome of care, where trust and treatment outcomes were directly proportional. It was found that patients who had less trust in their physician had a worse treatment outcome than patients who had significantly more trust in their physician. With keeping the fact that there is a direct link between medical mistrust and race in mind, the study also discussed that cultural and linguistic differences may play a part in medical mistrust, where they then recommended that healthcare professionals should practice cultural competence as to increase a positive increasing trend in trust in the healthcare system. In the United States, it has been found that inequities within racial groups show negative outcomes in treatment and health in relation to cancer screening or treatment, Parkinson's disease, dementia, and other neurological issues, end-of-life care, cardiovascular disease treatment, pain management, HIV care, and neonatal care. It has been found that African-American individuals are less likely to be diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, 30% less likely to be prescribed pharmaceuticals in relation to dementia in comparison with Caucasian individuals, extreme differences in pain management as opposed to Caucasian individuals, where opioids were significantly less likely to be prescribed to African-Americans for both non-surgical or surgical reasons, and African-American individuals were found to be 30% less likely to see an outpatient neurologist in relation to neurological conditions as opposed to Caucasian counterparts. This could be due to medical mistrust as well as systemic racism. We will now shift our focus onto a small snapshot of African-American slash black history in relationship to medical and scientific research. Medicine has developed significantly throughout the 21st century due to groundbreaking advancements in medical research, with some examples being advancements in infectious disease treatment and the creation of cell lines to be used interdisciplinarily. Throughout these groundbreaking discoveries, there have been some major studies and research implementations that have directly affected minority communities as they have been widely discussed throughout the media in relation to ethics and systemic racism which in turn have potentially impacted the trust that these racial communities hold on medical research. We will now discuss both the implementation of HeLa cell lines and the 1931 Tuskegee study and how this has potentially negatively impacted the trust that certain racial groups have on medical research. In 1951, a 31-year-old black woman, Henrietta Lacks, was unfortunately diagnosed with a rare form of cervical cancer where she was undergoing treatment at John Hopkins Hospital in Maryland, Florida. Henrietta's physician then donated her cervical tissue from the biopsy to a research facility within John Hopkins without asking for either Henrietta's or her family's knowledge or consent. After her death in 1951, the research team found that her cells had the capacity to survive longer as well as proliferate faster and were in turn labeled to be immortal. The research team capitalized off the capacity of these cells where they were then used as cultured cells to create the cervical cancer line known as HeLa cells. Although the HeLa cell line has been utilized within many different groundbreaking discoveries in medicine, her family still failed to receive recognition by the research team at John Hopkins. Over the years, Henrietta's name, genomic files, and medical records continued to be spread throughout the media, where her family tried desperately for these metrics to be erased. In an article written by Callaway and published in Nature, they discussed the usually human cell line donors remain anonymous, although Henrietta's name has been released within publications and the media to hundreds of thousands or even millions of people. 
Due to the sheer amount of press and publicity that the bioethics case has received, it could pose some negative reinforcements within the public view on the scientific and medical community and their privacy as well as their autonomy. Because of the neglect towards Henrietta Lacks and her family's privacy, the black community has voiced the concerns that they feel as though science must now right their wrongs where they have discussed that the systemic racism that existed when Henrietta's tissue was donated still exists and is severely affecting their trust within medical research today. The public, the Lax family, and researchers are currently pushing for further policies to be implemented that will ensure the question of consent is crucial within biospecimen donation to therefore reinforce a sense of trust within the scientific community. Another research ethics case relating to an increase in medical mistrust includes the Tuskegee study conducted in Alabama in 1932. The aim of the study was to observe and determine the natural history of untreated syphilis in black men. The study consisted of a cohort of 600 black men where there were 399 cases diagnosed with syphilis at the start of the study and 201 healthy controls. The participants were recruited through the promise that they would have access to free treatment for bad blood throughout the course of the study where it was then found that they actually received no treatment at all. The premise behind selecting solely black men as their participants came from a racist claim that African American individuals did not experience the same amount of pain as Caucasian individuals did, where there was absolutely no scientific evidence that this claim was correct. Throughout the course of this study, the intervention of syphilis using penicillin was introduced, where the men were purposely not made aware that treatment was available for the purpose of continuing the study. The physicians withheld treatment where the researchers were well aware that it meant death for the participants. Attrition rates began to increase as the men lost their lives due to the course of the disease. Although, before the study could be taken to completion, a formal venereal disease investigator with Public Health Services of Alabama disclosed the unethical practice of the study to the public, where it was then terminated. Nevertheless, the majority of the participants had developed tertiary syphilis, where they either became blind or deceased. A review of protection of human subjects and research guidelines was conducted by the federal administration, where they were then strengthened and settlement was obtained by the victims and their families. Nevertheless, the repercussions of trust within the medical community throughout the public skyrocketed, where in 1997, President Bill Clinton issued an apology to the five sole survivors at the time. The bioethical debate on the non-consensual use of Henrietta Lacks cervical cancer cell lines and the deliberate withhold of information with malicious racist intent within the Tuskegee study have been present throughout the media for decades, where there is potential for an increase in scientific mistrust, primarily within the African American population. In addition, African American individuals directly face discrimination and prejudice within their everyday lives, which could in turn trickle down into their trust in healthcare. Although not an immediate solution, systemic racism needs to be addressed within the healthcare profession, and this can occur by increasing physician and researcher cultural competence, which will allow for a mended relationship over time to develop the trust that the medicine and its research owes to different racial communities, as well as an increased quality of care provided to African American individuals.